called The American Gospel. And it's a pretty timely message, especially concerning all that's going on in like, politics today and seeing the leaders that we have left um, to vote for. Um, and especially with like uh, political correctness that comes with being a Christian and there's a lot of things that are being allowed with homosexuality, transgender acts, different things like that that seem to infiltrate and corrupt the Christian's mind. But I want you guys to know that it doesn't matter who we elect as president um, for this year, the next four years, the next 50 years, that person doesn't have the final say concerning the people in this country. So I want you guys to know that um, I pray that you guys open your hearts and open your minds to all that is said in this spoken word. Don't get lost in the similes, the metaphors and stuff, but really like open your hearts so that God has a message for you in particular. Is that cool, guys? Yeah. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the divided United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under one nation one nation okay i can't seem to finish this line because i'm a follower of christ so i don't want to lie i mean i i know the words one nation under god but it really should be one nation under fraud because we put his name on coins and dollar signs yet when we're called to defend our faith we can't keep a single verse in mind so i i think i'd rather underline the problem with this nation you see, the problem isn't the creator, but the problem is creation, that which was formed from dust, lost sight of its value and gave it all to lust and money and greed and worldly things like clothes and fame and diamond rings, but all that glitters is not gold. I mean, what good is all the world if a man loses his soul? And it's not like having money is wrong, but when that money has you, it'll string you along a downward spiral through the cycle of sin. Because the devil has a face and a, he can look like Ben Franklin. Like we sit around and wonder why the nation is so flawed, but have you ever seen a nation prosper without God? I mean, I really woke up one day and looked around in horror because I wasn't sure if this was the USA or Sodom and Gomorrah or maybe the changes to you are unknown. But I've noticed things like when the pastor says, open up your Bibles, we pull out our phones and I don't know about you, but there's something different between a physical Bible and the U version edition because his word is a living sword, not a handheld pocket knife. And his word is not dependent on battery life. And this is just another way to distract from the God who is trying to give us what we lack. But see, we're too busy trying to discuss facts, like whether Jesus was white or if he was black, whether he had blonde hair and ivory skin or if he had kinks and coils and rich melanin. But see, I don't think the tone of his skin is what motivated him to save the world from sin. Maybe America doesn't know what it means to be desperate. See, maybe like Job, we need to be tested because I, I know some examples of what faith can do. So maybe you need to allow your faith to move you like the man whose eyes Jesus rubbed with mud. Or maybe like the woman with the issue of blood because she reached for his garment while the people mocked her. But Jesus came for the sick, so... <coughs> I think I need a doctor. See, if being sick is what it takes to be anointed, then show me where I sign up for my next appointment. Because America thinks it can make it without my Lord, as if electing another leader for the next four years will suddenly get us all on one accord. So, yeah, let's say we give Obama four more years just to please us. But giving Obama a third term will not draw America closer to Jesus. Like we're losing baby believers to a sinful world. So I call that a miscarriage because we have leaders who will swear on the Bible, but still go out and promote gay marriage. But in 1 Peter 2, 9, God calls us a holy nation. And I don't think that was a typo, so I doubt he was mistaken. Like, he set Christians apart solely for consecration, and we are in the world, but not of the world. So there's a very thin line with that separation, yet some of us are acting like this is up for negotiation. <laughs> we 
got the turnt Christians, the drunk Christians, the Christians who are promiscuous, gay Christians, fake Christians, leaving believers inconspicuous. See, we recognize that this country is in need of a savior, but it's getting really hard to distinguish a Christ follower from a Christian with a worldly behavior because the souls of unbelievers look for God, so they search. But tell me, how good is the good news if we're turning sinners away from church? And this message is not meant to be condescending. And unlike a Twitter topic, this message won't be trending because it calls us to wake up, to be real and stop pretending. See, your life may be the only Bible a person ever reads. So you got to make sure your acts match up with what you sow and what you reap. Like we're supposed to be the body of Christ, but it's like we've been paralyzed. Like these dead bones are meant to rise, but instead they're being fossilized by compromise after compromise after compromise. Look, we may live in America, but we're governed by a different master. So let's be more like active servants and less uh, Twitter pastors. Because <laughs> my God, huh, he reigns. They call America land of the free. And yeah, maybe they did abolish slavery, but people are still living in chains. And they're working for a freedom they won't get any faster. Because every time the devil tells them something to do, they're quick to say, oh, yes, master. Like this country was built on the constitution, but not built on repentance. But who the sun sets free is free indeed. So that's my declaration of independence. We serve a righteous king who wears a crown of thorns. They serve a ruler who apparently carries a pitchfork with horns, torn between death or being reborn, worn out from fighting a battle that's already been won. It's World War III in their hearts because they won't give it to the son who definitely didn't stutter when he said, it is done. And like a game of one-on-one, -on -one, he crossed the devil when he hung up on that cross. And while his legs were crossed, he X'd my sin out like a cross. And with his blood, he paid the cost. The shepherd did that for his sheep so that not even one would be lost. So it truly is in God we trust because we serve a righteous king who never left us. I said, it truly is in God we trust because we serve a righteous king who never left us. So it's not up to me whether America is listening, but I'm a citizen of heaven, so for all I know, <laughs> I'm just visiting. Amen. Amen. Amen.